All right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today, I'm delighted to be joined from Crystal Beach in Ontario, Canada by Karen Roy. How are you doing, Karen? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. And Karen's an acclaimed author, leadership expert, and cre creator of the renowned online book course called Author Fast Track. And with a mantra of take risks and follow your curiosity, curiosity with all the tenacity you can muster, Karen's transformed her life from a corporate scatterbrain <laughs> to a trailblazing <laughs> entrepreneur. And after, after enjoying a 30-year successful career in organizations like Bell Canada, Visa Canada, uh, you decide to embrace a new path, left behind your senior roles and established Karen Roy and Associates, a boutique, a boutique retail consulting firm specializing in sales, training, marketing and operations. And what we're going to talk about today is that fantastic subject is embracing curiosity to discover that superpower within you. Um, so, I mean, to start off with uh, Karen, I would say that... Um, because we, I have this thing where people are always saying to me all the time, like, oh, I'm, I'm busier than I've ever been in my life. And I'm always like, are you, though? Uh, are, yeah. you just more <laughs> are you just more distracted than you've ever been? And I feel like we're there's so many distractions and things flying that people are losing that sense of curiosity because they're getting so addicted to, like, you know, these instant dopamine hits and move on. But they're, that, that, that real intellectual curiosity, I worry about that. What's your thoughts? Yeah. And, you know, it's true. We're so used to quick hits and, and things that I think we, a, a lot of times we go all about ourselves instead of finding out more about others and what makes them tick and, and what they do. And, you know, when you're curious, you're asking questions, you're asking different questions, you want to learn. And I feel curiosity and, you know, learning are, they go hand in hand. So, when we have so many things at our fingertips these days, it kind of takes away your curiosity because I can Google something and I get an answer mm -hmm. right away. Um, so I think when you step back and you look at the bigger picture and you know where you align and want to align with others out there, your curiosity um, you know starts to spark. Yeah, and I think that's a great point, a, a great way of framing it there because uh, it is all about. It is all about you if you're not being curious or whatever, because curiosity necessitates, as you said, the listening, asking questions and listening, because it's the only way you can you can satisfy your curiosity is actually by getting some getting some feedback or gaining some insights. And you think about how incredibly important. I mean, we talk a lot about salespeople here. How incredibly important is curiosity to sales? If you don't, if you're not even curious about the business of your customers and that, you know, you're never going to be that successful. No, exactly. And, you know, that was an early part of my corporate career in telecommunications. I was working with large um, companies and we were creating their network. So I had to ask them, I had to understand their business. And, and part of being curi curious is then how do I take that and problem solve for them mm -hmm. and figure out where they're having their, their challenges. And, you know, the more you're curious, it it really sparks an engaging conversation with them because they know you're trying to look out for their best interest. And that's kind of where I, I, I guess I was always curious as a kid, but right. just where I realized it was more, it was really important in, um, in, you know, what I did as a living and working with uh, corporate clients. Yeah. Well, you know, they used to say, and they used to warn you when you were a kid, like saying, Oh, curiosity killed the cat. And I was going, <laughs> yeah. But the cat has nine lives, so it gets to discover a, <laughs> discovers a lot of stuff in the. <laughs> exactly, I was. It's funny. I was thinking that in my head as, uh, yeah, as you, and then you said it. So yeah. absolutely. Uh, yeah. So one of the things uh, that I think uh, this this uh, aligns to really well is there's been a, there's been some research done recently, and it's amazing, right? When you talk to employees or people in general what it is they're looking for and it's quite simple it's kind of basic it's like they're looking to be seen heard and understood right seen heard and understood right. very simple if you are if you are genuinely curious then in your engagements with people they will feel 
seen, heard, and understood if you're genuinely curious. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I agree with that. And and the other part of that too then is um, curiosity about yourself. Because one of the other things I often come across is like people don't know why they're doing what they're doing. You know, what's the yes. purpose? Why they're yes, on on a superficial level, of course. But how does curiosity and purpose come together? Yeah, well, again, it's a, a good point you just said is it's learning about yourself and who you are. And I find a lot of us, we're going through the motions, but we really don't do the work on who we are. Um, and, you know, that's where it kind of came back to that corporate scatterbrain mm -hmm. because I, I'm a curious person. I love to problem solve and I can come up with some really great innovative ideas that sometimes people might scratch their head at, but mm -hmm. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let me articulate what my thought is. So, you know, I think when we get away from that, um, it, it you know, it, you lose yourself a bit. So I think you need to come back to who you are, that that is a unique ability that, you know, you have being curious and problem solving and, you know, becoming an innovator um, of sort. And, and once you know that it changes, like when I was in corporate, because I created that type of thing, once I, you know, went into some different roles, mm -hmm. they were boring to me. So right. then I started, you know, jumping, going, oh, really, is this it? Like, is this, this is what I'm going to do for the next, my next nine lives? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. And so that's kind of where the scatterbrain part came in because people would be like, oh, like there she goes on to another job. But to me, I was, I was filling my purpose and what made me tick because sitting, you know, nine to five in a cubicle although it works for a lot of people, it just wasn't who I mm -hmm. was. And back in that, you know, kind of day, um, you just didn't step out. Like having security in a corporate job was everything everybody wanted. So, you know, when I started jumping here and there, people would be like, well, you know, why did she just do that? But that was okay. You know, that was from their perspective, but Mm -hmm. I just had to tune out the naysayers. And I think that's what you have to do if you're going to be true to who you are. Yeah, and no, no, I would agree with that. And I think uh, you have to also look at who you're surrounding yourselves with, who you're surrounding yourself with, what kind of inputs you are taking from the universe. Uh, yes. You know, as I would say to people, are you starting your day, you know, do you reach over, grab the phone, check the news, because guess what, the news isn't there to inform you, it's there to provoke you. Or are you going on <laughs> social media and then you're ending up with competition, you know, with a comparison right. problem. All So you're starting your day out with all this garbage in your head. So I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, is making those personal choices and i don't think you can do that until until you actually do a little bit of a deep dive on what your purpose is and, and be curious about why how, why are you where you are today even right yeah you know i was curious about a lot of things and so i always had you know little side hustles on the side or i decided you know i wanted to um improve my my physical condition and decided you know what or 43, I was going to go into a figure competition and everything that that. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. You're always, when you're curious, you're always learning and there's always knowledge that you're gaining. And then, you know, hopefully you can uh, help other people with what you learn. Mm -hmm. I decided, you know, I, I'm, I love aging and how the best way to age is. So Pilates, that was another thing I did. So, you know, I was, uh, in my late 40s, I went back and I got my Pilates instructor. Um, so it's just, it's what makes you tick, right? right. And so um, when you talk to people, then you have lots to talk about because you have opened up your mind to different opportunities. And every time you're talking to, you know, different people, there's a different opportunities that come up. And it's just if you want to um, be curious enough to, you know, to go down and see what all of that is about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like we were saying earlier, like in, in business or sales or anything like that, it's it's when you show curiosity, uh, it, it's like that's a huge compliment to the other person. If you are curious enough to want to know more and to go down. And, and I think sometimes we miss because we live in this self-absorbed world that we mm -hmm. forget. And and it's like, I mean, it drives me crazy sometimes, but I could have somebody like having a conversation with you and then 
halfway through the conversation, they glance down at the text on their phone and then come back to the conversation and you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so what I mean I is, is in order, but in order to, you have to understand that curiosity and when you're engaging with people and that respect, the respect of actually taking an interest and then listening, actually listening. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think too, um, you know, cause we have lots of fears and, and a lot of times people hold back because they don't mm -hmm. want to, you know, appear oh, kind of silly or I, I should know that. But I find you can't be curious and fearful at the same time. Mm. That's an, in yeah, that's a very, that's a very interesting concept. You can't be curious and fearful at the same time. So, I mean, one of those things, I guess, if you're going to start down this path is to give your, is, is to overcome that fear or give yourself permission to be a little bit afraid, but go on anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're asking the right questions, you're, you're then starting to build that confidence and and feeling more comfortable with the unknown or what you're mm -hmm. finding you know what you're curious about yeah and when you were when you were first going out on your own and starting your own business i mean uh what were some of the things uh what were some of the things that maybe that you had thought about in advance but surprised you later um well you know i i was very optimistic and so um i would go into you know businesses because i i was really at the time helping them you know streamline yeah. their operations and things like that and then what i found is as a consultant then they wanted to hire me on full time and so i always struggled with okay do i stay as a consultant i'm trying to uh get enough clients to pay and you know yeah. uh keep a roof over my head or is it always easier to become an employee because you know you've proven yourself and they know you can do that so those were little things i i struggled with a lot and sometimes i was like oh it's just so much easier to um be an employee okay i'll give up and you know zip over and and things like that um if my business was slow so it's always, you know, that was always a, a balance until I was like, oh, this isn't right. going to work for me. And then finally had the confidence to say, no, Karen, you know, you know, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Just continue on. Excellent. And and the other thing that you um, uh, referenced earlier, and I think it's an important as well, is this idea of being a lifelong learner. So always. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, obviously that and curiosity goes hand in hand. But it's amazing how a lot of people can be in jobs and they just they've given up on professional development self development as relates to their job yeah. they're just like i know my job i just do it um probably more yeah. likely to spend money on a hobby than they are on their own uh, on helping them with their own profession yes. uh and i and i think uh, you know that's when people i think gets gets get stuck right mhm mm yeah and I think that's just something you have to take upon yourself. If you want to move forward in your career or where you are just for your own self and, and do that self work, I think you have to continue. Like learning is continuous. You don't go to a certain age and then say, okay, I'm not going to learn anymore. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I know as much as I want to. So it is that continual learning, but that's what keeps your mind fresh and involved and you see things and you know and it helps you problem solve i feel a lot better uh having that knowledge mm -hmm. and i think uh, just one of the other things too and maybe it's a little bit of a a, a a negative or a downside rather of sometimes if you if you're initially curious you may not get the reaction you're expecting because you know sometimes people are a little defensive and they're like, oh, why do you want to know yeah. that and and yeah. I think that's where you have to do a little prep work in advance and be like, well, I just want to understand it better so I can do my job better, I can help you better, or if I'm sent, I can, I can yes. tailor this properly. But I think sometimes like people have to be prepared that the initial initial reaction to some of their curiosity may not be positive. Yeah, and you know, in in our book, leadership. It's not just yeah. for leaders. We talk about relationship networking, and that's where you know it's not about you. It's about the other person, and it's about. Um, I also love emotional intelligence, um, and it's how you uniquely combine those in your tone of voice, mm -hmm. in you know your smile. They're they're reading you across the you know whether I'm sitting in a boardroom or on a zoom call, right? Mm -hmm. People are reading your energy. And when you've articulated enough of why you're 
asking those questions, then people, you know, once they trust you and they they have a, you know, you they know where you're coming from, they will open up. But if you're coming in very, you know, well, uh, 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 mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't provide that opportunity or that, um, you know, that that time for them to just really open up and talk to you. They don't feel comfortable and they have to trust you to do that too. Yeah. And I think sometimes, I think people sometimes nowadays aren't the greatest at answering those or asking those open-ended questions as ones that invite more than just like, you know, a, a summary yeah. or no answer. I think we've lost a lot of the art of how to precipitate and, and engage in a conversation. Yeah. And like you said, sometimes, you know, if I don't get the answer I was looking for, I'm like, okay, I didn't ask the right question mm -hmm. or I need to circle back. Maybe, you know, I haven't articulated what I'm trying, you know, what the outcome is or mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. So I always go back and then, you know, try, try it again. And then there's just going to be the people that aren't, aren't going to let you in quite yet. Mm -hmm. And that's okay too. Um, it's it's all on timing. Yeah. And I think the other big thing is obviously validation because uh, it, it is huge, as we said, respectful, but validating is when I turn around after you've said something, if I ask you something, explain, if I then say something like, oh, okay, just let me just let me repeat that to you, make sure I understood it properly. Anytime you do that, that's a massive compliment because it means I genuinely want to understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I've... Not everybody's always going to be open, but when mm. they do know you're, you know, you're, you're looking after their best interests and you're asking the question that nobody's ever asked them before, then they're like, oh, she is interested. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you can get some really great conversations started from that, which, um, you know, is always very entertaining and, mm. and it's rewardful. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I agree. And I think that's the I think if there's any lesson to be learned today is that is just don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right. You know, we have all these technologies yeah. of everything, but we've been through things like a collective experience with COVID, with recessionary times. You know, people are craving personal contact relations, but even if it is virtual like it like this yes. is, they're craving that. So if you start to engage and be more curious and more engaging, it's the right, it's it's always been a good thing to do, but it's the right time now because I, I think it shocked mm -hmm. some people out of their stupor. Yeah. Yeah. And we do, we crave, we're, we're human beings. We like to be able to um, interact with other people, meet other people and, um, and, you know, it, there's studies. I think you live a lot longer when you're, you know, you're not by yourself and you're you're working with other people, whether it's social or at work or what have mm -hmm. you. So um, I, I think we need to get back, though, to that um, to that type of dialogue where we are out and we are, you know, finding out what others are doing and have that genuine interest and that curiosity. No, and absolutely because I mean you can do it in you know, you can do it in other ways or you know you can curious mm -hmm. but whatever, but it's humans who throw you the curveballs, right? Um, the other <laughs> thing you can gather a lot of information, but it's humans who will who will, as I said, deliver a curveball you're not expecting. So. Um, yeah. Listen, this has been fantastic. All of Karen's information is going to be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, part of being uh, curi curious um, and having the book, um, I created an online book course called Book Coaching Academy. And I'm really there to um, instill curiosity in the authors and the entrepreneurs that I work with. Because everybody always says, oh, you, you know, I'd love to write a book, but I don't know how, I don't know where to start. So mm -hmm. being that problem solver, I created a course that's, it's not a lot of fluff and stuff. It's very tactical, but I find, you know, as entrepreneurs, we're busy and we don't have a lot of time. So, um, you know, and, and helping authors get a better story out of whatever they're writing, right? And, and getting them to be curious and see things from a different lens. So that's, um, that's, again, is bookcoachingacademy.com, a great online course called Author Fast Track. 
And uh, that's where, where I am right now, helping entrepreneurs uh, write their first book and get it published. Excellent. Well, I would encourage you to go check it out. Uh, you know, writing a book is not an easy thing, so you're better off going getting getting help. It's a lot harder than people think. Uh, it is. Or maybe they, maybe they do think it's really hard. But anyway, I would encourage you to go uh, go check out go check out Karen's work if you're considering writing a book or if you feel you've just got something inside you that you need to get out. All right. Well, listen. Thanks again, Karen. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon.